Well, welcome to Devotions. It's uh, my turn to spend the week with you as we go through just a few things that the Lord put on my heart. I'm going to mostly be looking at the book of uh, 2 Peter, which is one of the books right to the end of the New Testament, the second book that Peter wrote for us. And I was just reading this in my own devotional life and just thought, this is something that obviously was so much on his heart that he, Paul, Peter actually uses the, the phrase, remember, 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 again and again and again. Listen to what he says about these things that I'm about to share with you. He said in chapter 1 of Second Peter, he says in verse 12, Therefore I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I think it is right, as long as I'm in this body, to stir you up by way of reminder, since I know that you are since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me, and I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be at any time to recall these things. So these are things that the Apostle Peter, thinking, man, my life is just about over, but I know I've spent my whole life reminding you of these things, but I'm just going to write you one more letter to remind you of them again, and you're probably going to hear me remind you again. So what are these things? Well, he talks about these uh, seven qualities, which uh, are found in chapter 1 in verse 4, uh, sorry, verse 5. Uh, he says, for this very reason, make every effort to, su to supplement your faith with virtue, and with virtue, knowledge, with knowledge, self-control, and self-control, steadfastness, and steadfastness, godliness, and godliness, with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection, with love. We're going to actually look at all those things over the next week. But today, we're just going to talk about how why it's so important to focus on these specific qualities, and what those focusing on them will do for our faith. He says, it's, you're starting out with faith, but faith in what? Well, he actually says in verse 3 and 4, he says this amazing thing, which I think a lot of Christians still struggle to even know about, but then secondly, to really believe, uh, maybe you. He, he says, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and, and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature. That is just an incredible thing to say, that, that you and I, that we can actually uh, take up divinity, the like godliness, not as something that we try to do, but something that's part of us. And I think that's really what these, these characteristics or these qualities are about. They're about living out the way that you really are. And if you never actually do what you are, you never walk in them, you never discover them, they never, they never grow and mature in you. And so what the Apostle Peter is telling us is the way that we mature into full-grown adults is to practice the characteristics of adults. If you just remain a child and act like a child, you'll just stay childish. So. Maybe it's, it's like I, I did with my kids, and you probably, if you've got kids as well, and my parents did it with me, that there was a time where, yeah, sure, being a baby was being a baby. I had to, no, but I couldn't clean up after myself, not whatever came out of here or the other end. It was, it was, I was a baby. I had to be cared for. But then as I started to mature and started to grow, my parents, in faith that I would become a fully mature man, a fully mature human being, they begin to ask me to, require me to, practice certain qualities of maturity. Cleaning up my room, taking care of my stuff, getting my homework done, doing my chores, speaking respectfully, you know, showing patience with my brothers and sisters, you know, being, being uh, a person that could operate in the adult world without any trouble. But my parents, knowing that, started me when I was young. And I think these are the very same kind of things, is that Peter has discerned through the Holy Spirit that we've got really these kind of eight qualities. Well, if the foundation's faith, then there's seven qualities that, that if you practice them, they draw out that divine nature that you've been promised and given in you. So it's kind of a way of practicing your new character, your, your new creation, the new person that you are. We discover it as we do it, and the more that we're involved in that process, the stronger we are, the more equipped we are, the faster we grow, and it's by doing that we discover who we are made in Christ. And so 
I think that's what I want to just leave you with in the challenge today, is that it's important for us to know exactly what God has promised us or promised you. In a sense, it's like if, if, you're, if you're a child version, what, is, what are you growing to? What promise do you know that God has made about you that promising you what you are going to become? You know, when I grow up, I'm going to be. Well, if you could make a Christian version of that, when I grow up, I'm going to be. If we know the thing that we are promised to become, the thing that we have been given, not because we earned it, but because God simply said that it's going to be ours. What is that thing that God has kind of given you an image of who you're becoming? Sometimes I think it's important to, to just take a moment, to just stop from all of the other sort of immediate needs, to step back and actually ask God, what is the vision? What is the, what is the future? What is the adult me like? What's the grown up me like? And to think that, that God has already made that available to you through Jesus Christ. And you can inherit that divine nature, that Christ-likeness for yourself. Because it's coming by a promise, not by something you earn. And when you latch on to that image, that's what pulls you. That's what takes you into your future. It's like kind of like a, if you, a child was prophesied that he, when he was young, that you'll be king one day or, or you'll be a great a warrior, or you'll be a, a great statesman, or you'll be a great doctor. The child grows up with that certain knowledge that I'm going to become that. Well, what is it that God has promised you from his word? Maybe by speak, people speaking to you, maybe a, an image that the Holy Spirit's given you. What, is, what has God promised you? I want you to just think and pray about that, because that's what you're becoming. You have been granted access to these things, everything that pertains to life and godliness through that promise. So God bless you as you think and pray about that today.